you are, there is a miraculous element that is in the atmosphere. In his presence, there is fullness. There is no half measure. Do me a favor now. As the cellos play, as the strings play out, take a deep breath now. The Spirit of God, breathe in every person now today. Let your presence overwhelm them. Let your presence, let your presence overwhelm us today. Let your great presence overwhelm us, O oh God. And let us know that as you are with those in Israel, in Egypt, as you took them and led them so, you will lead us, Lord God. And we praise you. Come on. minister to the Lord in Acts and fasted and prayed the Holy Spirit spoke it does not mention a man's name it says the Holy Spirit spoke and said separate unto me Paul and Barnabas today I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to every person all over the world some of you seeking direction some of you are fearful. I get letters every day from people that are fearful. But the Spirit of God said, why have you chosen fear? What is it that causes my people to look to fear? To say, we must go back. God's Spirit says to America and to the nations of the earth, do I stand fearing? When I spoke to Joshua, I said, do not fear. When I speak to you today, Many have said, what about the tsunami that is coming to New York? God said, there is no tsunami coming to New York at this time. I am the Lord, the creator. The earth obeys me. And I've said certain things to happen. But at this time, God said, no tsunami. I will show you that there shall be a spiritual tidal wave that shall lift the people to a higher place. Enough of this fear mongering says the Spirit of God. Look at Israel as they are now being rocketed because of handshaking with Iran, your enemy. But God says they have not shook my hand. They have not taken my hand in a covenant. Only those who have taken my hand in a covenant shall see the release of my glory in this end time. And it is coming, says the Lord. It is coming like a mighty rushing wind as it was in the day, the acts of the day of Pentecost. So it is coming again that my people may breathe the breath of God, that the paracletos may once again stand as the comforter of mankind. I will not hold back, says the Lord. This is an hour where triumph shall be heard from the north to the south and to the east to the west, says the Lord. The Lord. what he just said he didn't shake the hand of Iran but his hand is upon Israel and because of that we are going to stand today as a people with them a revelation just came I want everybody to, to remain in a, in a prayerful attitude right now just for a minute we're not finished yet but at this very moment I'm sensing something very unusual I told Jane when she walked in I said there is an unusual presence of God there is a miraculous element that is in the environment. No, we don't always say that. But if he's, the presence of the Lord is here, if the power of the Lord is here present to heal and to restore and remove barrenness, then so shall it be. Listen to these words. And I want everybody watching all over the world to hear me out. When God reveals something like he just did, maybe to some of you it's old news, but to us it's news that comes from heaven itself regarding the status of this nation. We've given up. We basically become America haters, haters of Israel. And yet I can sense the presence of God hovering. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's hovering, wanting to come down and do what he promised he would do in these end times. 
I'm ready for that. How about you? When God reveals himself and there is a poor response, then he is limited to the amount of blessing that he can bring out of that word and out of that revelation. In 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 15 to 19, I'll read it to you quickly. And Elisha said to him, to the king, the monarch, who had requested a word regarding a war. And Elisha was well known for pinpointing where the enemy was and the strategy of the enemy. He said to Elisha, I need a word. And Elisha said to him, take a bow and some arrows. And he himself took the bow and some arrows. And then he said to the king, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hands on it and Elisha put his hands over the king's hands. The prophetic, if a king is not guided by a prophetic anointing, I'm not talking just about a prophet, the word of the Lord. His arrows go in the wrong way. This president forsook the very hands that have held on to the kings and the presidents over the centuries. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Forsook Israel. And the arrows are shooting and doing nothing. Absolutely nothing but destruction. He put his hands on the king's hand and he said, open the east window. Gave him specific instructions. And he opened it. Then Elijah, Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Afek till you have destroyed them. He gives him a clear word. And, the, and this is what happens. He says something that I don't think was even, or we would say would not be necessary. He says, take the arrows that have now been prophetically empowered. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. And then Elisha stood back. And so the king struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. My point is this. God gives a revelation to Elisha. He tells the monarch that he should strike the ground with these arrows and leaves him. Doesn't tell him how many times. So the king strikes three times and apparently this is not the way God wanted it. He wants the king to dictate the outcome of the revelation. God reveals to you what you must do in order to bring about a victory. He gives you the strategy. He gives you the formula. But listen to this. You decide the vastness of the outcome and the blessing by how much you put into it. What we are going to do today all over the world, this is not only to bless Israel, to bless the kingdom of God. We are going to, we are going to act in reference to our future. So in other words, don't act and live according to your present circumstances and surrounding. Act in reference to your future. If you remember the story about Abraham, when he was visited by God in the appearance of three men, what happened? He, he lavished him with gifts. First water, then bread and butter, then a fatted calf, gave him the best. Until God deposited something into his home in terms of a, of a promise. Then God says something very unusual. He says, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? It is not within the interests of God to hide from his prophets and his prophetic people what he intends doing. And he says these words, and I want you to listen carefully. Shall I hide from Abraham what I am going to do? Since Abraham shall surely become a great nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed by him. He hasn't become a nation yet. He hasn't even had a son. And God is speaking to him in reference to his destiny and his future. He says, this is what he's going to become. So we're going to speak to him on the basis of that promise that I gave him. Every one of you listen to me. In other words, act. We are giving him a word in reference to his future. We are sharing something with him in reference to the future. I want you to do me a favor today. I want you to act in reference to your future. How do you see your future? How do you see your enemies? Are you going to strike two or three times and think that's satisfactory? Or are you going to strike five or six times or even eight times? What is your intention today? This nation is in a severe way. But yet there are remnant of people that are rising and they are saying no more. 
No more. We will pray and we will not let you go, Lord, until you bless us. I say, do what Jacob did when he grabbed a hold of God. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Let's, let's pray together. I want every person all over the world, we're going to do something. We're going to offer our offering in the presence of God right now. You're going to minister to Him, and you are going to give in reference to your future. In other words, I'm not going to give according to my present circumstances. I'm going to give in reference to the future what I want to happen for me. And what God has spoken, I'm going to respond to that revelation. Are you with me? Okay. Just remember something. Today is the tomorrow you prayed for yesterday. I'll say it again. Today is the tomorrow you prayed for yesterday. Does your today suck? Is it bad? Then, then you didn't sow in reference to your future. My today is blessed. My little girl who has one of the worst heart diseases is presently on her way from the hospital to our house. They said that she'd never leave today. <laughs> that's not in reference to what I did today that is because of what I did yesterday I prayed for this day today I gave and sowed into this day and I'm reaping because of what I did yesterday I want you to think about that the promise of the Lord has come every person watching me all over the world all of you here I want you to pray this prayer with me Lord God I believe in the word that you have just spoken for my nation for my family, for me, for my house, for my church, for my business. I am not going to give today in reference to my present, but in reference to what you have spoken. No more barrenness. And so right now, I want you to speak to me. Show me what I should give in response to that which you have just revealed. I don't mind what you tell me. I have enough faith, unusual faith, to believe that if I act, striking six or seven times, that you will respond with a massive blessing. Now, Lord, speak to every person right now all over the world. Now, you're going to hear something. You're going to feel something. It's beautiful. There's so many of you watching right now that saw the exuberance and the joy. I want you to my arms forever I am glad We're so many presence of reality God religion plays a terrible game but there is the truth and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty many of you are watching that have not made that one final decision I'm talking about the serious decision Jesus is hanging between two criminals even while dying while in pain taking the weight of the world on his hands Satan watching in glee and as Jesus takes his last breath snatches one more soul into the kingdom that to me is the essence of Christianity today you will be with me in paradise 
It's not tomorrow. It's today. Please, all over the world and even in this place. If today you sense that presence of God whispering in your ear, tugging at your heart, then I want you to commit yourself to Him today because He will deliver you. He will free you from the grip and the power of sin like He does, has been doing for 2,000 years. That same Jesus that was hanging on the cross to deliver that soul who said, remember me. Maybe you've said the same thing. Does He even remember me? Does He even know my name? Yes, He does. That same presence is here today. For every person that's watching and in this audience, if perhaps you know in your heart that you're not right with God. And you of Jesus and the blood of Christ to forgive you of your sins then I want you to do me a favor in this audience you can move down the aisle and stand in the front don't be ashamed come I need deliverance I'll never be able to shake this of my life without the power of God I will never be able to stop this addiction I've tried everything but I want to tell you something and I was 18 years of age I was addicted from a young boy and he was not condescending that condescended of himself and took me from a street and gave me eternal life I don't care what gutter you are in I don't care what slum you are in today the power of God is present to deliver you watching me somewhere or in the world you're saying Kim I'm that person I need Jesus to free me then I want you where you are to raise your hand. And he'll do it for you now. You may be saying, Kim, I don't have to come forward. I don't have to raise my hand. Yes, you do. Because that action causes God to get close to you. Move near to him and he will move near to you. Now let's pray a prayer together. It's going to happen today. God wants to do a miracle in your brain and throughout your body. He remembered you today. He remembered you today. He remembers you and will not forget the promise that he gave to the one who cries out from the grave today. Michael The passion of your love drives me crazy And your well love steals my heart Your love has a major spell on me It makes me something that I'm not in my life Baby, I feel the intense passion of your love Lord, I pray for the power of your spirit to move upon her. And in the name that is above every other name, Jesus, bring your deliverance and your salvation today. And we give you thanks. We praise you for it. Come on. Enough! Enough! These daughters.
tormenting spirits have held grip of you for too long. You have such a dainty future. You have such a powerful road ahead of you where demons have said we will block her and trap her. Today, the power of Christ breaks this and gives you the freedom to walk on this journey and this road to touch lives by the millions. I give you this promise. If you would surrender today, God's power will raise you up and heal you today, says the Lord. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's talk. This often doesn't happen. So lift your hands to her and pray for her. Father, this today is her day. Cancer is just a name. But Lord, in her heart, she knows that there is much more to do than just write a book. Father, I pray that your presence that has come before would completely destroy cancer and completely destroy the infirmity that has already been broken by Christ himself. And I thank you for that in the name of Christ Jesus. Come on, give him praise. There's nobody quite like you. Please everybody sing it. There's nobody quite like you. There's nobody quite like you. I found a friend in you. of this Sunil come around what a howling wilderness our world would be without God now you're watching me all over the world we're gonna pray a prayer what a howling wilderness our world would be without God if just once he hides his face from us withered are the flowers in my garden my pleasant fruits decay the birds suspend their songs and a storm overturns our hopes. Today, Lord, I pray that you would become the life of their life and you would become the soul of their soul and you would become the life of their life. Now say this prayer with me. All of you that came forward, all of you all over the world that are standing, I receive that free gift that was given to me by God when he sent his son I did not fight for it it was given to me now I reach out to him and receive Christ the eternal life the forgiveness and a new life Forgive me, Lord. Take my heart. I've kept it from you for too long. And I thank you for receiving me. Now, Lord, I pray every person that prayed their prayer would feel the transforming power of God in these next few days. And as they have forsaken darkness, I pray let light shine on them. Even in the dark place. And I thank you for it. In the name of Christ, amen. Come and give God a big hand, everybody.